Thanks for joining us on the weekend edition of National Focus. I'm Lurian Graham Carter. Coming up, Government of Mexico commits U.S. $5 million to construct Marigot Hospital, $1.2 million committed to development of Pishle Community, and over $400,000 for charitable institutions. Stay with us for the details of these and other stories after this. I've been in the business for over 16 years. I get up in the mornings and I look forward to having the next cruise ship both on island. When the visitor steps off the ship, the first impression is me. And I believe that I need to put my best foot forward and to ensure that everything I do, I do it to the best of my ability. Based on my recommendation, visitors go to various sites, restaurants, bars, and vendors. I take that responsibility very seriously. I would like that the guest receives the same service that I have provided to that individual or guest. This business is bigger than me. Everybody plays a role. The cleaner who cleans my bus, my mechanic who does my checks, those persons ensure that I provide a quality service to the guest. The tourism dollar doesn't just stop with me. It allows me to pay the bank, visit the supermarket to feed myself and family, and have a drink with friends. My name is Jenna Gist, and tourism is my business. Thank you for staying with us. During a courtesy call to the Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, Mexico's Ambassador to Dominica, His Excellency Luis Manuel Moreno, committed EC $13.5 million for the construction of the Marigot Hospital. The Ambassador met with the Prime Minister at his office along with Honorable Foreign Affairs Minister and CARICOM Affairs Minister Francine Byron and Honorable Minister for Economic Development and Investment Dr. John Colin McIntyre. Honorable Skerritt thanked the Ambassador for Mexico's continued interest in the welfare of Dominica. Well, we appreciate very much you know, yourself personally, uh, has been um, exemplary in, in, in your efforts to, to strengthen the relationship between Mexico and Dominica. And, and I dare say Mexico and the Caribbean. Yeah. You know, uh, we, have, we have great regard for the leadership of Mexico and, and the Mexican people and, and, uh, and uh, the efforts which they are playing at, whether it's at the Pan American Health Organization yeah. or whether it is at um, the, the Organization of American States or whether it is the joint commission between Mexico and CARICOM on bilateral exactly. basis. Thank you. Uh, Mexico has been very instrumental. And uh, after a trip across America, I mean, you were one of the first uh, to reach out to us. I, I got you at the airport. That's right. In, That's right. Yeah. 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 So mm -hmm. the very first to reach out to us uh, and expressing uh, concern and also um, offering uh, assistance. So we really want to appreci really appreciate the, the efforts of the Mexican people and Mexican government. In more news, the government of Dominica continued its series of town hall meetings on Thursday in the community of Pishle. In his address, Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, committed $1.2 million to the Pishle community. He first stated that $300,000 will be given to the Village Council for Road Rehabilitation. There is a commitment and there is, the money should be in the Council's office either tomorrow or very early next week, God's willing. Of $300,000, $300,000 for the construction of the retaining wall that was affected by Tropical Storm Erica. And an additional $300,000 for the crossing at Flip to benefit many <laughs> residents. Many residents who live across the river. And, th and that, those monies, that $300,000, will be transferred to the village council to assist us in implementing that project. He also made a promise of an additional $600,000 for small business and the construction of washrooms and housing. A commitment of $150,000 has been approved for small business assistance in the village of Pichna. 41 additional washrooms to be constructed for people in Pishle at a cost of $451,000. Nine new homes to be built in Maratha Square 
And I said to Dr. Darry, look, I don't want to come to Maryland for Square to fix people's homes because they're homes that cannot be fixed. And we need to build new homes for these people in Maryland for Square. And out of this, out of this new nine homes, 32 people will benefit. 32 people will benefit as a result of these new homes for the residents of Maryland for Square. The nation's leader revealed that residents of the community in need of homes will be the recipients of some of the houses being built in Bellevue Chopin, as well as other homes courtesy of the government of Dominica. I'm saying to some of you in Peachland, who either got your homes affected by Erica, or some of you who do not have homes on a renting, that there will be some homes in Bellevue Chopin for you here in Peachland. Because we are not only providing or building homes just for the people from Pedit Saban. We are building extra homes, recognizing that we know that there are people in Pichle and Bellevue Chopin who need a home and who have been waiting for some time. So sometimes, my dear friends, in every disappointment, there is a blessing. And through Erica, we are advancing our abilities to provide you, some of you, with homes. So I want to urge you to ensure that you, Dr. Daru has your name, so that when the government is considering the allocation of those homes, we know of who in Pishle are those persons. The Minister for Finance highlighted the speed in which government was able to respond to the needs of the nation following the devastation of Tropical Storm Erica. We're building up there 1,000, listen to this, 1,600 rooms at Bellevue Chopin. 1,600 room, rooms, over 341 plus homes. A major project, over hundred million dollars. There are countries that are much richer than us, where storms affected those countries ten years ago, fifteen years ago, and people are still waiting for a house that the government promised them. And we here in Dominica, a country with very limited financial resources have signed every single contract to build every single home for the people of Pity Saban who were impacted by Tropical Storm Erica. Meantime, the nation's leader has affirmed his commitment to build an international airport in Dominica. At a town hall meeting in Peibush on Wednesday, Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt said a firm engaged to make recommendations on the airport will be making a presentation to Cabinet next month. I give you the assurances, my dear brothers and sisters in Peibush, that Dominica will have an international airport on its own. We will have an international airport on our own. Because if we're going to be investing so heavily in these hotel rooms, we must ensure that we improve air access into our country and place our country in a better position to take advantage of the many billions of tourist dollars circulating around the world. And on the 21st of April, God willing, the firm which we have engaged to advise us on the International Airport will make a presentation to the Cabinet on its recommendations. And, and I am satisfied that the good Lord will help us raise the money to build this airport for all people in Dominica. You are watching National Focus. More when we return. I worked in the service industry for nine years and I love it because of the people I get to meet every day. And that's one of the reasons I went back to college, to be better able to serve the tourists when they come to our destination and to be able to learn more about Dominica. I love learning more about Dominica because the more I learn, the more I can share. And I just want to share Dominica with everyone. I'm from Manjan, which is in the southeast of Dominica, and I've lived overseas for 24 years. 
Living overseas has made me appreciate Dominica and all it has to offer. Like taking a walk in the forest, going to the botanical garden, or even drinking fresh sauce water. I never thought I could miss green so much. Even as a student, I'm still directly linked to the tourism industry. From something as simple as giving directions to tourists, or even more involved like an internship at a hotel, or a cleanup campaign with DHTA. As a tourism student, I have made the decision to take my place in this tourism industry. My name is Lucina Nicholas, and tourism is my business. Welcome back. A promise made by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, in December to seven charitable organizations has been fulfilled. On Friday, Honorable Dr. Skerritt, the Honorable Minister for Social Services, Lady Catherine Daniel, and other cabinet ministers once again met with the charitable organizations to hand over checks promised to meet their capital needs based on their request. The total amount of monies that will be handed over here this morning is um, $462,664.69. Now that is just, that amount is just for the capital works. That's to improve on your uh, facilities based on your request to us. Um, some of you um, have to expand, some of you have to improve on your existing condition. Some of you have to make your facilities um, safer, <coughs> safer um, fencing of the, of the properties. Some of you, especially in the, in the Respite Center in Portsmouth, the internal works which need to be done to enhance the, the safety of the, of the, um, of the beneficiaries of, of, of this facility. I know at the, at, the, at the infirmary, you have to improve on the electricals and the plumbing because you know, there's a, a sewage system. There can be real challenges there. And then the, the second level of support is based on your request for an increase in the recurrent expenditure of your facility. And that will be factored in, in into, the, into the new financial year coming up. The Dominica leader commended the homes and institutions for the work they are doing. He also assured them that government will continue to work with them to meet their recurring expenditures. The Honorable Minister for Social Services, Lady Catherine Daniel, stated that at the last meeting with the organizations and homes on December 15, 2016, the institution shared their needs with government. She explained that during the last three months, government had reviewed the proposals submitted and they were approved by cabinet. She revealed to the institutions that the funds handed to them on Friday are from the Citizenship by Investment Program. And this is a hallmark, the hallmark of the Dominican Labour Party, the hallmark of the, this government to help the um, less fortunate people among us. As Minister responsible for social services, I see significant positive in this initiative to augment the good work that you all are doing at, over the years. And some of you have been in the vineyard toiling and struggling for the vulnerable people for a long time as non-profit, residential facilities and charitable institutions, um, which we see already provide care to the elderly, the vulnerable groups in our society, elderly, disabled children, and youth at risk, um, Operation Youth Code. And we really want to commend you and thank you so much for your effort and your continued interest in what we are doing. Honorable Daniel cautioned the institutions about being accountable for the monies donated to them. Some of you, when we give money, we like accountability. Some of you do not have operational boards in your facility. And we want to ensure that these boards are working so that this money can be accounted for. Too often, we have institutions where you give and give and give. The impact is not seen and the resources just go. And you give for so much and you don't see the things happening. And unless you put the structures in place for accountability, you will not be able to get what you, you know, invested in these institutions. Finally, this news time, Director of Trade, Marthon Walter, has affirmed that the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States OECS Trade Policy Unit has ensured that any implications to implement in the policy, allowing free movement of goods, have been catered for in the long run. 
the director was speaking at a Ministry of Trade press conference on Tuesday. He says, including in the benefits of this new policy being developed, that there are significant benefits, including that of the depression of prices on goods on the market within OECS states. In relation to depression of, of, of prices on the, on the market for consumer items, and also a wider variety because you, you are allowing domestic industries some space to breathe and to, and to grow. So there are benefits. Obviously, there, there are issues that we need to, to, to think about. For example, we, there, there will be some fiscal implications. But the, 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 in, the, in the structure and the roadmap moving forward that has been catered for. The OECS trade policy is well on its way into establishing the Eastern Caribbean Economic Union and implementing its policies as it relates to free circulation of goods within member states. Currently, goods moving between OECS member states have to comply with a number of administrative, physical, technical and fiscal requirements at each port of entry. The new policy will alleviate this process and altogether eliminate some of the current requirements, making it easier for states to trade. Also addressing the press conference was Program Officer at the OECS Consulate in St. Lucia, Cosworth Woods. Woods explained that once the member states have entered the Economic Union, same protocols will be taken by each country, ensuring goods meet the standards of the OECS. These member states also have to take into consideration Dominica's concerns when these goods come into their respective jurisdiction. Because once they would have entered the economic union at the first point of entry, met the border formalities, they can then move freely amongst the member states without any additional checks and balances and duties to be paid. The border agencies, the consumers in each member state have a certain level of comfort that the procedures that take place in St. Kitts suffice our requirements here in Dominica, so that when the goods would have entered at um, St. Kitts and Nevis, if they subsequently move down to Dominica, there's no need for us to do any additional checks and balances, and vice versa. The project to implement a union and policy will create a regime allowing easier circulation of goods by addressing some of the constraints currently experienced by some countries. Goods will then be traded at a lower cost and little or no technical administrative or fiscal barriers. Let's join Shakira Pair for this week's edition of Flashback. Welcome to this week's edition of Flashback. In the headlines this week, seven residents of La Plaine now have brand new homes, complements the government of Dominica. The new homeowners received their keys during a ceremony in La Plaine last Saturday. Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt has explained that funds derived from the Citizenship by Investment Program cannot be used to provide salary increases for public officers. Speaking at a town hall meeting in Roseau last week, Honorable Skerritt said unless government can continuously provide this increase suggested by the Public Service Union, the move to raise salaries could have detrimental results on the nation's economy. Also this week, the Dominica Water and Sewage Company Limited de Wasco launched a week of activities to observe World Water Day. Public Relations Officer Edward Regis said the company will launch a documentary on World Water Day, March 22nd, to sensitize the general public on the processes necessary for providing pipe-borne water to consumers. Former Member of Parliament Wilmer Chillingford was laid to rest on Monday. His Excellency, the President of Dominica, Charles Savre and Mrs. Savre, Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt and Mrs. Skerritt, Members of Parliament attended the official funeral. The late Wilmer Chillingford served as Member of Parliament for the St. Joseph constituency from May 1986 to April 1990. Canadian High Commissioner to Dominica, Margaret Legault, said she is impressed with the work that the Canadian-funded Propel project has been able to accomplish in Dominica. On Tuesday this week, the High Commissioner toured the Dominica Export-Import Agency Parkhouse, the Dominica Youth Business Trust and Dominica State College to see firsthand the work of the Propel project in these institutions. 
Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt has extended sympathy on behalf of his government and people to the British government on the unfortunate event which occurred in London on Wednesday. At a town hall meeting on Wednesday, Honorable Prime Minister told residents of Peebush that the Dominica Water and Sewage Company Limited will do remedial works at a cost of $98,000 to upgrade the community's water supply, while government will commit $1.2 million for a new system. Member of Parliament for Peebush, Roslyn Paul, also reported on a number of projects already underway in the community in road rehabilitation, housing, sanitation, education, health, agriculture, and small business. These were some of the headline stories making the news this week. For details of each of these stories and others, visit our website or Facebook page. And that's the English segment of the news. Shakira Pierre is also next with Grail Highlights. Bienvenue à ce nouvel accueil, non, moi c'est Shakira Peer. Gouvernement Dominique a tapé commitment au gouvernement Mexico pour 5 millions de dollars US qui est servi pour bâtir l'hôpital Marigot. Premier ministre Dominique, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, ambassadeur Mexico pour Dominique, His Excellency Luis Manuel Moreno, joue dans l'office premier ministre Jordi Vadredi. D'autres monde qui tient à mettre ça là, c'est ministre étranger, Honorable Francine Barron, et puis ministre pour affaires développement économique, Dr. John Colin McIntyre. Premier ministre Dominique, Honorable Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt, oui, merci au gouvernement Mexico pour continuer à mutuer l'intérêt à Dominique. Premier ministre l'a dit, Dominique déjà établi une bonne relation entre deux pays ça là. En d'autres nouvelles, Dominique a du bout en solidarité et puis gouvernement et peuple l'Angleterre si l'on débat terroriste qui prend place en pays ça là, mercredi semaine ça là. Premier ministre l'a dit, Dominique a du bout et puis pays Wallaterre pour gommer au compte des affaires terroristes qui a bien détruit pays Wallaterre. Premier ministre l'a dit, attaque ça là par affaire pire sens, c'est un ibagay qui au compte peuple l'Angleterre. Quatre mois après, parmi police officier mort en attaque terroriste ça là. Mam Parliament pour constituency Pebush, Honorable Roslyn Paul, ka fe pawol kuma gouvelma, Dominique ka chen rehabilitation chime an constituency la. Si le minister Paul yon san evek 7 mil dola ka depanse pou chime an te plat. Minis Paul osi fe pawol twabay chime ki ka pwen plas an komunite mon pak. Twabay ki osi pwen plas pou bati yon gwo miway an zolivye qui était bien dommagé par mauvais coup de temps Erika en l'année 2015. Sa fait Erika Sio et puis un grand projet GLO qui doit être bâti, avec 498 000 dollars qui est aussi point place. Et puis finalement, Dominique a parmi plaisir pays ou la terre qui a supporté Ban Asukon before Brazil. Powell Salah sorti au directeur commodité Marfan Walter. Si le monsieur Walter, Dominique mette Ban Salah au ligne de vie Vian Bef qui contamine et a sorti au pays Salah. Ministre commodité chen discussion et puis plaisir dans le département qui a concerné ça. Ça c'est tout pour nous voir à quoi on a nommé ces chaque européens. Ni un bon week-end. Au revoir. Coming up next, a brief information on World Tuberculosis Day. This year's theme for World Tuberculosis Day is Unite to End Tuberculosis, Leave No One Behind. According to the World Health Organization's 2016 World Tuberculosis Report, in 2015, the estimated incidence rate of TB in Dominica is 11 per 100,000 persons. Dominica continues to fall into a low TB incidence category. In 2015, the Ministry of Health recorded five cases of TB in Dominica. TB is diagnosed by direct sputum microscopy, molecular test, and culture. Presently, direct sputum microscopy is done in Dominica. TB can be cured and in Dominica, drugs are made available to clients free of charge. The end of TB strategy aims at global elimination of 90% cases of TB by 2035. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. 
Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash GISNewsDominica and follow our Twitter at GISDominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I'm Lorraine Graham Carter. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Thank you.